Hi, I'm Christy Gustafson Barletti with the Times Union and TimesUnion.com, and welcome to 20 Things Plus, where we catch up with somebody who was previously featured on 20 Things You Don't Know About Me. Today, we are joined by Anne McCloy. Anne is the early evening anchor at CBS 6 Albany, and she's also incredibly active on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and a fun person to follow. Hi, Anne. Hi, Christy. So one of the reasons, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but one of the reasons I was hoping you would join us for 20 Things Plus is because I do love following you on social media. It's it's so interesting. You're always kind of keeping us updated on the news between broadcasts and everything like that. But we're going to start with catching up with two of your original 20 Things, and then we will learn a few new things about you. Sounds good. So I think the first one um, involves your mom, right? Talk to us a little bit about her. Right. Well, I... I chose this because uh, I'm really close with my mom. I am an only child and I grew up with a single mom and that's really kind of shaped who I am as a human being. My mom actually just moved to New York from Arizona, which is a huge deal for me because as a broadcaster, I've lived all over the country. I am from Arizona. I was born in Los Angeles, uh, raised in Arizona, and then for my news career, I lived in Oregon, Tennessee, and then New York. And so I've been away from my mom for like a decade. And so she just moved to uh, New York in January. She purchased a house here, and I'm so excited to have her here. But also, uh, in my original 20 Things, I, I talk a lot about my mom because she was a business owner when I was growing up. She actually owned a clothing boutique, and I was raised literally in a clothing store. I would uh, spend all my time with my mom, like in the back room of the clothing store. I did all my homework there, and I learned a lot about just being an adult because as a single woman, she was running this business, and I witnessed all, all of her struggles, and I learned as a child what it meant to, you know, what the value of a dollar was because the business didn't do well a lot of the time and she was always constantly struggling. Um, And I even as a young girl would, I learned how to be a salesperson when I was like eight years old. Like I would take a rack of clothes and uh, my mom owned this store in a beauty mall in Arizona and I would take a rack of clothes and I would go around and show people the clothes when I was like 10 years old. So and how do you say no to a cute little kid? I bet you that's <laughs> definitely helped with, with sales. I, I like absolutely, I, but I loved it. Like I loved clothes from a really young age and it was, it was so fun for me to go with her and like show people all of our stuff and uh, my mom always joked that one of my first words was just telling people, cute, like, that's so cute on you. <laughs> well, I remember when you say about clothes, I know from following you, I think it's on Instagram, you would say when you went home to Arizona, was it one special kind of Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus or something that was only there? Because I yeah. started Googling it and figuring out how I could get there. And now yeah. I could go home to see your mom, right? Absolutely. So when I, uh, when I go home to see my mom is when I do most of my shopping in Arizona and the store you're talking about is called Nordstrom last chance. Oh, that's what it was. There's only, I believe there's three now, but there used to be only one in Arizona and they put everything. I don't want to get it wrong, but it's like up to 90% off. And so most of my news clothes, I mean, we have to wear something different almost every day. That's where I get most of my clothes because it's just too expensive to buy things from the mall, you know? So I go, there. go ahead. Sorry. And did your mom settle in upstate New York or she's just somewhere else in New York state? Oh, she's right. She literally lives in, in my neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Now you can def- you can make up for the last decade of not seeing her by walking to her house. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now your second one. Um, this, is, this is interesting because this transitions into your career which I like because I would have thought, obviously we know you're in news, but I would have thought you might've gone into sales seeing as you got to an earlier start or gone into fashion, been a stylist or things like that. But you knew that you wanted to do news because I know one of your original things that you started at, I think eight years old doing a TV station. Um, But you put yourself through college and did you know the whole time that you wanted to be a, a journalist? Yes. So it was actually in eighth grade that I decided. Oh, I eighth grade. To- I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it's okay. No, there. it's okay. <laughs> uh, in eighth grade is when I decided I wanted to be a broadcaster because my middle school actually had a TV program. The, there was a teacher there who loved television and he built a set in a warehouse and he taught us, it was technology class. So we learned about how to build PowerPoint presentations and things. 
but if you wanted to be on TV, you could try out. And we produced the morning announcements for 15 minutes every day. So we'd come in super early to school and we would produce a television show to deliver the morning announcements. And uh, so that's when I decided I wanted to be a journalist. But I learned very young that in order to go to college, I was going to have to probably pay for it just because I knew the financial situation with my family. And so I, that's what I'm, I'm very proud that I put myself through school and I, at a very young age, kind of learned what I would have to do in order to go to college because I knew how expensive it would be. And so my senior year of high school, I, I did go to a presentation where they told us you should really apply for a lot of scholarships, any scholarships out there, you should apply for it. So my junior and senior year, I had a study hall hour well, where I would go to the library and I would just apply for every scholarship that was available. I, national scholarships, local scholarships, I applied for every single one. And I ended up, I want to say I ended up with like eight or 10 scholarships out of that. And I ended up, I, I love telling people this because I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of young people who just think that they'll never get to go to college because of their financial situation at home. And they need this information. I don't think schools share this information enough. Like it is absolutely possible to go to college. It's absolutely possible to pay for college yourself. And um, yeah, so I applied for all those scholarships and I actually ended up with more money than I even, than even paid for the tuition and my, and my housing. It paid for tuition, housing, and then I had like a thousand extra dollars deposited into my account every semester that I could use for food and stuff like that. Um, so I, I don't know. I just like, I like to tell people that because I think I meet so many people who, you know, finances are a weird thing to talk about. And yes, yeah. especially when you're young, when you're in high school or middle school, it's not like you want to tell your friends, oh, I don't know if my family can afford to put me through school and, you know, kids have a lot of pressure on them and they'll, they'll pretend like everything's fine when it's not. Right. So I just think this is something that I wish people would talk about more. And if there's any students out there that, you know, are struggling with this, it's definitely something I would love to help other students out with. Well, and you're right, because I think if people feel embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it, then they don't know that there's things like all the scholarships available, because maybe if they talk to their friends or talk to people at school, they would say, oh, wait, guess what? There's this scholarship and that scholarship. What was the most obscure or unexpected scholarship you got? Because I know sometimes there, there's some strange ones that, that people get. Well, I, the one that's the most, oh, I would, I, this is funny, actually. I joined, I created Key Club at my high school. Well, Key Club is a community service club. Kiwanis Club is the adult version. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I learned that if you, I was trying to build my resume for college and I learned, oh, well, you should, you know, join a club or create a club. And I found out that there was no Key Club at my high school. So I started it my senior year and then I applied I found out there was a scholarship for a key club so I applied for the key club scholarship and I got the it was through Kiwanis Club I got um, a small awesome. scholarship through that which was really neat and then that was the most the key club was like the most rewarding thing that we that we did to raise money um through and then did the key club stick around in the school after you graduated what was that did the key club stay in school? Was that part of school after you graduated? I feel terrible, but I never checked to make sure the key club was still, I didn't make sure key club was still running. You're I think a I, key club mentor for your Arizona high school. I, I should check in. I love the teacher. The teacher was amazing who uh, helped us. Very cool. All right. Now we are going to update and I'm not sure which of these updates I love more because all three of yours are, or excuse me, not update. We're going to learn a couple of new things and all three are amazing. So let's start with this incredibly exciting life news that I think happened a few months ago, right? It did. So I'm engaged. In my original 20 things, I talked about my boyfriend, Chris. And in January, actually on my birthday, which is January 4th, he proposed when we were on a vacation in the Bahamas. And we just recently took our engagement photos actually this past weekend at Lake George. So this photo is at Lake George. But when we got engaged, obviously we're, we weren't anticipating a pandemic to begin uh, a couple months later. So we didn't really get to do a whole lot of wedding things. We actually, we wanted to get married this summer because we love 
we love Lake George and we love the summers there. But um, <laughs> in March, when we went to go sign the contract for the for the wedding is is right when coronavirus started in New York. And so we decided back then to push the wedding until 2021. Um, and you're going to do Lake George next summer in Lake George? Yeah, so we'll be, yeah, we'll be getting married next summer in Lake George. And, but this last weekend, we had so much fun doing our engagement shoot at Lake George. The forecast had a 30% chance of thunderstorms and we didn't know what to do. Like we were, it was an hour before we we're supposed to take these photos and we were talking to the wedding photographer who was so kind. And he was like, I don't know if we should do this. <laughs> and we were like, let's just, let's just go for it. So we did get rained on. <laughs> On the boat. Oh, you did. <laughs> it started you know, pouring. Say wedding rain on your wedding day is good luck. Maybe rain on your engagement photo day is extra good luck, right? Everybody can use good luck right now. I hope so. I think it actually made it a lot more fun. Like I just stopped caring about what my hair looks like or whatever, <laughs> and it was it was cool. Well, talking about appearance, I don't know if the, we still have the photo to put up, but your shoes and your dress are absolutely fabulous. Are in that photo, or did you get them at your Nordstrom last call, or was that a find somewhere? No, else? no, actually, um, those shoes I have been wanting. Like I've been wanting a pair of those my entire life, and I bought a pair for myself. I bought those shoes a year ago, and they have been sitting in my um, closet as like a museum article. <laughs> They're kind of worthy of a museum <laughs> article. <laughs> and um, actually, the dress is a rental. I um, I also do rent the runway. Rent the but, runway. Oh, yeah. My. You look fantastic, and those shoes are enviable. I love them. All right. <laughs> Number two on something new. This is, I think, back when this was happening, and I'll let you talk about it, but let me just say, I think I was sending you direct messages because you were, I mean, all the reporters in the Capitol region were doing an amazing job, but you were just kicking butt at these Cuomo briefings. And I think I messaged you and said, oh my gosh, you went viral at one point with one of your questions. So talk a little bit about what it was like to cover these briefings or what it's been like the last several months. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm very uh, proud that I was able to be in the room when Governor Cuomo was give, giving the daily briefings. I think it'll probably go down as one of the most memorable uh, times of my entire journalism career. I was in the newsroom here watching. I wasn't there from day one. I got, I got involved in the briefings probably three weeks in because we were still developing, we didn't, <laughs> coronavirus hit and all of the businesses were trying to figure out, you know, what to do. So we were still in the process of getting our news anchors and reporters working from home. So I was, co I started covering the briefings in the newsroom, just watching the governor on the satellite feed. And I was, I was covering it, but I wasn't there in person at first. And then when we got everyone settled and situated um, for safety at the station, I had been, I'd been saying, I really want to go there. I, I'm seeing all these questions from upstate New Yorkers for the governor. And I just, I want to be in the room. Like I want to be able to ask these questions for our viewers because I've never had a moment in my journalism career where getting answers from our politicians has been more important. And the, the questions that the people have are so important during this pandemic. And everybody, you know, everybody has different feelings and emotions. And so what a great opportunity uh, it was to be able to sit just feet in front of Governor Cuomo, raise your hand, you know, yell out your question and to get a direct answer from him the same day. It was well, talk a little bit about that one, because I know you were quoted in stories, not just around the country, but around the world for one of your questions that you had asked at one point. And I know people were praising you all over. I saw it all over Twitter and they were just really pleased that you had asked about this. So tell us a little bit what happened there. Well, there was that day, there was a protest happening outside and it was people rallying for businesses to be reopened in upstate. And some of them, I'd gone and spoken with some of them right before the briefing because the rally was already going on. And I just was asking some of them why they were there. And some said, you know, we don't want to be on unemployment. The unemployment system isn't working. We want to open our businesses. And as a reporter, my job is to bring those you know, concerns into the governor. Right. So I did. And I said, what do you, what do you tell these people who are concerned about the unemployment system? And 
the issue was people were applying for unemployment at the beginning and the system crashed because right. in one week there were 8 million people calling into the New York state unemployment system. So these people were forced out of work when the businesses shut down, they were uh, applying for unemployment and could not get the money. So some people literally had no money coming in and a lot of people don't have savings and don't have, you know, aren't prepared for a crisis. And so I asked him, well, what, what are people supposed to do if their business was shut down and now our unemployment system isn't working? And his response that day was that they should get an essential job. And, and that just became sort of like the pullout quote that every media outlet used and obviously talked about how you asked that question. And I, I think that he's maybe recovered a little bit from that, but that was certainly not the most shining moment because people were clearly offended. They're like, it's, that's not the issue here, really. But, so. Yeah, and you know, but the thing is that it also showed, it, there was a lot of criticism to the governor on that point, but it also showed what a huge fan base he has because it wasn't just, it. it there wasn't just haters talking about that. There were people, there were, oh, people, yeah. who, there were people who absolutely, he can do no wrong in so many people's eyes. Of course. And so it really showed, it showed the support for the governor and it showed um, also that that was a point of, of criticism. And that's the case with any politician. Every politician will either do, do all wrong, no matter what great things they do, or they can do nothing right, even if something is wonderful, you know, it goes both ways. So I understand that. Yeah. All right. And then the third new thing, which, this kind of ties everything together about what you've been doing and your fantastic clothes and your lifestyle and your last several months, I should say, on lockdown or quarantine or whatever we're calling it. What's been going on there? Well, when I decided that I was, I wanted to go in and cover the governor and that I, I also, I should mention, I, I fought to be in the building. I'm at work right now in the Channel 6 studios. I really wanted to stay here. I'm just, I'm a routine oriented person and I was scared to work from home. I'll, I'll just be honest because, you know, we're on deadline and I just, I felt like I really needed to be in the studio. And so I, for the first two weeks of the shutdown, I think I ate and drank myself into, you know, oblivion, like most people probably gained about five pounds. And I, and then I said, and <laughs> gotta stop doing this because you know, I had to build my immunity. I was going to be going around people and covering news stories. And I, who, I definitely, you know, could have been in a situation where I could have gotten COVID and I wanted to make sure that I was building up my, my immunity just in case I was around somebody, you know, who had the virus or something like that. So I just decided to go on a really, really strict diet and exercise plan. And I was drinking hot water with lemon like all the time because I wanted to clear everything out and I ended up I also had reasons to lose weight like we're I'm getting married and so I kind of had the motivation there but I think when COVID hit and our job as journalists just became so important I was like I need to get my act together and I need to get my health together so that I can withstand whatever happens to me health-wise and and um, luckily like very luckily I've been able to lose weight and stay healthy during this entire thing. And I have no idea if that has anything to do with it, but I hope so. <laughs> well, I saw your before and after picture and I was, I think I actually said, whoa, wow, loud. it looks fantastic. I mean, I always thought it looked great, but then you see the before, I think sometimes you think people look amazing and then you see a before and after and you think, oh, well, okay. They can look even more amazing. And I didn't realize that. Do you know what I'm saying? It just, you look fit, you know, it's not just slim, you look fit, you look like you're working out and, and all that kind of thing. It's not just hot water and lemon. It's, I feel like it's lifestyle, it's exercise and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, I've always been a really extreme exerciser. Like I, I mean, I do like hit workouts and stuff like that. And I had during the winter time, I'll just say, I, I stopped working out for whatever reason this past winter. I stopped going to my exercise classes. I don't know. I, I think we all go through stages where we're just not into it. And so I kind of gained weight and gotten out of out of shape. I'll just be really honest. I was kind of like at the, the highest I've ever, you know, weighed and I did not feel good about myself at all. And I say this, I like to share things because it's like I am I feel like everyone's very similar. You know, we're all human beings. And so um I I just share it because 
like anyone can, anyone can do this. And, you know, we all sometimes feel not good about ourselves. And we all sometimes like, you know, go way overboard with like eating pizza. And, stuff like that. <laughs> and I definitely had, but what I learned um, this time around with my lifestyle is that I just go out and walk. Like I go out and walk for an hour every day. It does not have to be extreme. Like you don't have to do these crazy workouts with crazy weights. Like if I could, you know, tell anyone anything, it's just like move your body <laughs> in a way that, you know, if, if you like to walk and that's relaxing, just like do that. And, and it makes a huge, huge difference. So that's what I learned through the pandemic. Walking like saved my life. It cleared my mind um, when I was really stressed out and it also just like kept me healthy. So and now that your mom lived here, you can walk to her house. And yes. Keep laughing your neighborhood. All right. Very cool. So at this point and in 20 things plus we do, we play a little game and I will offer three clues to you as well as to people watching this. They can, we'll tr basically everybody's trying to guess who might be 20 things you don't know about me on Monday. They can submit their guesses on via Twitter at times union or at just Christy. And we will see if you can guess. I'm going to read the three, then I'm going to give you a hint that might make it very obvious, but we will see. All right, so the first one is, I'll tell you, she's a woman, it's a woman. She's a woman. I was on the D1 women's rowing team at Syracuse University. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> I know, well, individually, they're not going to help, but maybe when you put them all together. All okay. right. I was a member of 4-H and showed heifers at fairs each summer. And then she goes on to say that she spent a lot of time at her grandpa Bob's dairy farm in New Hampshire, where they kept several animals. Okay. So she's got the New Hampshire connection and she's got the Syracuse University connection. And then this one will be one that you will relate to because I was thrilled to get a job straight out of college at the ABC affiliate in Utica. Oh, I shot and edited all my own stories. When I was promoted to anchor, I produced my own show and even ran my own teleprompter with a foot pedal. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I'll give you this hint. She's awfully young to have to have run, run a teleprompter with a foot pedal. Oh, and highlights include our live coverage of the Boilermaker Road Race and the Utica Comets Hockey Games. So I, is it, I, is, I it Nick, is it, I have no way. I'm going to feel. No, like I think it. you almost just is said it. Mary, well, is it Mary Wilson? Yes, it is. No way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't believe she was running a teleprompter with her foot. I feel like you'd have to be. <laughs> much older than Mary Wilson to be running a teleprompter with your foot, but apparently that is still a thing. So that's Mary. Obviously, oh. she's on another station, but she was promoted earlier this week, so we'll be featuring her Monday on. Yeah. On Twenty oh, things you know about me. So awesome. And you, of course, are on CBS Six Albany in the early evenings. Everyone can watch you, but I really also recommend they follow you on social media because obviously I get most of my news from the Times Union, but you are one of the television reporters I turn to most often to see the updates because. You're just, it's very interesting to follow you on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you. And I love your social media as well. And I appreciate how much you do keep up with all of the local TV personalities because it's a lot to keep up with. It is. I'm always like, oh my gosh, someone else is leaving. Someone else is coming. <laughs> but it always seems to happen on Friday at 9 p.m. But yeah. So thank you so much, Anne. Thank I you. appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.